In the comments of one of my last videos, a lot of people asked, should I get the A1 or the A1 mini? So let's talk about it. The good thing is both of these printers are amazing, so you can't do much wrong anyways. But also this makes the decision so hard. I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of each printer to help you make the right decision for yourself and your specific needs. Let's start talking about the A1 Mini since it's the cheaper of both options. So one of the main benefits with the A1 Mini is the super low starting price of 199 bucks. With that, it's a super affordable and cheap entry into the 3D printing game. So if you're not 100% sure if you wanna do 3D printing as a long-term thing, or you don't have the budget right now, then this is an awesome thing to buy. Also, I think it's a really easy to use machine. I made a whole video about that, you can check that out here. But most of those points actually also apply to the full-sized A1. Another thing that I also really love is the small form factor. This is one of the biggest strengths, but also one of the biggest weaknesses of this printer. If you don't have that much space at home, it's amazing how much you can do with this tiny 3D printer and it just goes into a little nook or cranny wherever and that's perfect. If you want to go even further, you can print this handle to make it super portable. I, for example, often just store mine in the cabinet when I don't use it, so it's really out of the way and it's perfect because it's so small. The A1 Mini is actually the only 3D printer that I have at my apartment at home just because the size and it does most of what I need for stuff at home so I'm really happy with that. As I said before, the small build volume is also pretty much the biggest drawback of this 3D printer. With its 18x18x18 18 by 18 by 18 build volume, it's a lot smaller than the full-sized A1. In my experience, I'd say that 80-90% to 90 of the stuff I print actually do fit on this printer and it's no problem at all. But I have to say, there are those couple percents of prints that don't fit on this printer. Personally, I have enough other printers that are big enough to put that on, so it's not a problem for me. But if this is your only printer, then you might run into some limitations sooner or later. Of course, you can still cut models in the slicer to make them fit on this print volume and then just join them together later. But in terms of quality, obviously it's best to print everything in one piece. So now let's talk about the full-size A1. Its main benefit is obviously the larger bed size. It has the same kind of print bed as the P1S or the X1C. This gives you a lot more options for printing bigger things or printing more small things at the same time. Also, it's really nice that you can interchange the print beds if later on you buy one of those other printers. If you have the space and the money, then I definitely would say that a bigger printer and a bigger print volume is the way to go since it gives you so many more options. So if you're thinking that 3D printing will be a long-term hobby, then I would definitely spend the extra money and get the bigger printer first, since otherwise you might end up rebuying or upgrading a little bit down the line, which then will cost more eventually. The main downsides of the full-size A1 is definitely the bigger footprint and the bigger price tag. One thing I want to mention is if you're planning to get the AMS unit as well, then I would heavily lean towards the full-size A1 because all the form factor benefits of the A1 are pretty much gone once you put that huge AMS right next to it. So at that point, you might as well go for the bigger A1 and you know have the most options and the most possibilities. One more thing I wanted to say in general about this, I think the AMS is really worth it because it just gives you so many options. Personally, I don't do a lot of multicolor printing, but even for quick material changes and also multi-material supports, it's a great help and something that you should really think about investing in. I made a whole video about that so you can check that out here. Of course, if you're super budget limited, the A1 Mini also still works well with the AMS, but I think overall, if you're buying it as an AMS combo, the price difference, at least in percentage, between the A1 Mini and the A1 gets a lot smaller too. I hope this helps you make a better decision on which printer to get. As I said, in the end, both of these are a great buy and I think there's no clear one right answer, but it depends on your circumstances. As a first printer, I would definitely tend to the full-size A1 if you have the budget, but the A1 Mini is still great and also it's still super great as a second printer. So personally, I love that a lot about it, just having another printer that can print other stuff while you're printing on the bigger printer. And it's really nice for that, especially at the super nice price. One little thing I have to say in this context is Bamboo's recent security changes for their firmware and how that restricts and affects users. I think the final verdict on what it's actually gonna be isn't 100% out yet, but I don't think it's a good thing. These are still very good printers and they can still do a lot, 
but obviously you have to see if this is something or an ecosystem that you want to invest into with all those pros and cons that it has. Do your own research on this, investigate and see what your final opinion on that is. So if you end up buying either of these, then please use one of my affiliate links in the description down below. It won't cost you anything extra and I get a small kickback that helps me grow this channel. Other than that, please let me know in the comments which one you ended up going with and why. I think it's super interesting. Maybe you have other points to go either way and I'd love to hear about it. And now if you're wondering what to watch next and maybe this is your first 3D printer, then I have a video that talks about a lot of little slicer tips and tricks that's gonna help you save a lot of filament and also shave hours of your print time. It's really easy to implement and beginner friendly, so check that out to make your 3D printing life easier. For now, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.